Hi, and welcome back to this week's Parsha Shir and Sefer Tal Hermon. As we begin this new Sefer of Shemot, uh, this new Sefer of Hagaula, Sefer of the Redemption of the Jewish People, the uh, article this week by Rav Avinar addresses himself to this transition between Bereshit and Shemot, to the transition between us being a family and us being a nation, to the complicated question of the balance between the individual and the collective and the experience the Jewish people go through in this parsha, He says, Anu potchim sefer chadash. We open a new book. What are the words of the opening of this new book? Ela shemot b'nei Yisrael. Ve'ela shemot b'nei Yisrael. And these are the names of b'nei Yisrael who came down to Egypt, the names of individuals. Chazal biaru. Chazal explain, Ela pasal atarishonot. Ve'ela mosif al rishonot. Chazal explain in the Mechota that anywhere we have Ela, in the Torah, Ela comes to negate what came before it. So something existed, Ela and this, meaning a new beginning, a new start, a new story, something completely disconnected to what came before. Ve'ela is mostly pal rishonot. And Ela, ve'ela, whenever that's written in the Torah, it's meant not to negate what comes before, to separate from what comes before, or to, to indicate a, a moment of uh, intense discrepancy and transition, but rather a v, an additive element, something coming in addition to what we knew before. Klomar ha-pticha e'la mitzayenet davar chadash l'chalutin, ve'ilu ha-pticha ve'ela mitzayenet omnam hitpatkut chadasha, ava kazo ha-mitbaseset al ha-shlavim ha-kodmim. E'la represents a brand new start, ve'ela represents something new, but something that is coming on the foothills or on the basis, the foundation of what come before it, came before it. Afkan, that's exactly what we find here. Ve'ela Shemot B'nei Yisrael Ha'ba'im Mitzrayimet Yaakov, Reuven, Shimon, etc. Yosef Ve'ela Shemot B'nei Yisrael indicates something new is about to happen here something transitional is happening here but it's Ve'ela it's mostly follow Rishonot it's something adding to the foundation that already exists before it Muzkarim Ha'avod Ha'shvatim Ha'yechidim Ha'anakim Sha'asakno Ba'am B'Sefer B'Reshit V'im Zeh Yesh Chidush Ba'yamot Yosef V'chol Echav V'chol Hador Ha'hu so on the one hand, we have a list of all of the tribes, all of Yaakov and his children and the brothers, these giants of individuals, these individuals who were so, you know, larger than life figures and the characteristics that they embodied were larger than life in terms of the establishment of the Jewish people and the brachot that Yaakov gives them in the previous parsha. They're Yechidim Anikim, they're great individuals who we learned a lot about in Sefer, Shema, in Sefer Bereshit. But the passage ends with the death of Yosef and all of his brothers and all of that generation. Hashemot nimchakim ve'enam. This is the transitional paragraph. In the ve'ela moment, in the moment of transition, we have all these individuals, great individuals, the individuals of Bereshit. And now those come to a close. Yosef died, his brother died, brothers died. All of that generation died off. And now, as they die off, we enter into a new period of the Torah's history, where all of a sudden the names of individuals are erased. And instead of that, we have a new body, which lacks individual names. The name of the body as a whole is B'nai Yisrael. Instead of being referred to as Reuven, Shimon, and Levi, and Yehuda, all the individual names of the children, they're just called B'nai Yisrael, the children of Israel without any individual names. Kmochen, so too. Lachar ken muskaim gan anashim beofen sitmi, kigon vayelch ish mi beit levi, vaykachet bat levi. In addition, we have references to people who are taking certain very individualized actions and yet their names are not mentioned. They're mentioned anonymously. Vayelch ish mi beit levi, a man from the house of Levi goes and takes the daughter of Levi, Amram and Yochavet. We know who they are, but their names are not mentioned. To the matriarchs, the patriarchs, the brothers, the tribes, they all have individual names, ma'amad miyuchad, individual status, mahut miyuchad, a special, uh, special nature to themselves, shuhugdara b'mahalach ha'parshiot u'brachot yachol levanav, that are developed over the course of time over many parshiot, and they're all encompassed in the brachot that Yaakov gives in Parsha Vayechi at the end of Bereshit. Ve'ilu kan ein shemot. But here, after the transition of ve'ela shemot, we have something based on that foundation, but a new story now without names. Yesh tishtush shel hamahuyot apratiyot. There is a, a distortion 
of the individual existence, of the individual details, of the individual names. Kan l'umatzod mofia an. Here we have the apparition, not necessarily of individuals, but of the nation. Hayechidim nivlaim b'klaliut. The individuals are literally swallowed up by the whole. Derech dor hamiastim ha'anakim ne'elam. The generation of, of giants, of founders, is gone. Umufia ha'avaya lumit ha'rechava. And all of a sudden, the very broad, the very wide national existence appears. Shayechidim enim boltimba. And in that wide national, broad existence, individuals are not as apparent anymore. Hashemot ha'pratim nimchakim. Individual names, therefore, to represent that transition, are erased. Umufia ha'shem ha'chadash asher kore lanu. And a new name is given to us, the name of our totality, the name of a generalized nation. Here is the nation, the children of Israel. That new title and the transition out from the individualized names is the indication that we've transitioned from a group of individuals to something much broader than that, to a nation. Ve'ela Shemot B'nei Yisrael indicates that transition. That moment of transition is happening. It's not a total severing of the past, like Ela, it's Ve'ela. We're building off the foundation of those Yechidim, those Anakim, those great giants, individualized characters, which we know about up till now, and building off of that to transition to something broader called a nation, where we will have individuals, and we'll see their role in a minute, but where their names are not as important anymore. Their names are not in lights anymore. Their names are not as bolate. They're not as standing out as before because now we have a collective name called Am Bnei Israel. Yetera mizot, imze mitale b'at muto et ha... Imze mitale b'at mato al ha'am ha-mitzri ha-adir. Hine Am Bnei Israel rav v'atzu mimenu. Not only do we rise as a nation, but we rise as a nation to be even greater than the Egyptians, that we find ourselves in their midst. Hashem HaChadash is a nikra aleinu, mipiv hatamesh al paro. What's interesting is that the name Am Bnei Yisrael is something uttered for the first time by Paro, of all people, the wicked. Muzar, very strange. Haim ha'itchadshut ha'nakit hazot shichal avodafka ayado? Does this transition from individuals to collective have to come about through him, through such impurity? Achin aleinu la'avin, what we can learn from this is that even a, a paro, a rasha like that, is a shaliyach of a kaddish baruch Hu in this world. It's playing a function of God's master plan. There isn't a bad force in the world and a good force in the world. It's all a kaddish baruch Hu. Hashem poel. Yotzerim movil tamalchim ha'historim. Hashem is the one who is active, who is leading the course of history. Gam derech kochel tarashot ba'olam. Even sometimes through the actions of wicked people like Paro in the world. So even though we got our name from Paro, it doesn't mean that it's an evil or wicked name or comes from impurity. It's all part of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, no matter what the source. Even the formation of our own nationhood today in the modern era largely came out of the proclamation of non-Jews in the Balfour Declaration, which gave rise to our national identity. Sometimes it comes about that national existence, that transition of ve'ela shemot from yechidim to an am, come about without us even knowing it, totally from the outside, sometimes even from non-Jews, sometimes even from Rishayim, like Paro, but it's all part of God's master plan. God could act through any means in this world. Hashem shemitchadesh b'fi paro mekabel, achar kach et ishuro ha'eloki. The name that first appeared through Paro, Am Bnei Israel, later receives approval, tacit approval, by Akadosh Baruch Hu when he says, paro, et ami Bnei Israel Hashem says, "Go, Moshe, and save my people, my nation, Ami Bnei Israel." Using that same term as Paro from Egypt, seeing that God gives uh, His approval to this as well really indicating that it was God from the beginning who allowed Paro to be able to call us that name. Everything happens through the means of HaKadosh Baruch So far, Rav Avinar is focused on the transition from individuals to the collective. What he then notes is that even in the collective, there are, of course, individuals, even prominent individuals, individuals that stand out. You might argue against his thesis so far and say, Ve'ela Shemot, B'nai Yisrael, is not 
a transition out of the period of names and giant individuals, Avram, Yitzchim, Yaakov, Saruf, Karach, Aleya, all these uh, tribes, Reuben, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Asher, God, Naphtali. No, he says, you might think that it's not a transition out of that because we have other greats. Now we have Moshe, we have Aaron, we have Miriam, you have other great names. He says, no, it's not so simple. If you look carefully, we do have individuals that stand out in the collective. But the collective is now the priority. Collective is now the entity. And the echidim, the individuals, simply fit into that into that larger structure. There are individuals. Of course, every a group, every collective is made up of individuals. And sometimes those individuals bubble to the surface. Sometimes those individuals stand out. Sometimes those individuals play a role. But they're not as individuals per se. They're still within the framework of the collective. There are sometimes individuals who are named, named by name in the collective. But now they no longer stand alone. What they stand is as part of the nation and for the nation. Their whole purpose of acting as individuals is not for themselves, but for the sake of the collective. That's how they're evaluated, not in terms of their greatness as individuals, but in terms of their contribution to the nation. El Moshe Omer Hashem, Hashem says to Moshe, Hashem has to come to Moshe Rabbeinu and remind him that he never appeared to Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov as Hashem. The Avot never experienced Hashem through his manifestation through that name, but now Bnei Israel will. And more live Bnei Israel and Hashem. So what the nation is able to achieve in terms of uh, their closeness by Kadesh Baruch Hu and the name Hashem is something that even the Avot, as great individuals, were not able to achieve. Am Yisrael ka'am zocheh. The Jewish people as a nation is zocheh. We merited it. It's not because of the greatness of an individual like Moshe Rabbeinu that we now have this greater relationship with Hashem. Through the name Hashem, more even than the Avod, it's not because of an individual, it's because of our status as a nation. He says, Adarabah, actually it's despite Moshe Rabbeinu that the nation is able to achieve that heightened level of spirituality. In some way, you know, in on the individual level, Moshe doesn't stand up to the greatness of the Avot, to Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov. So he wouldn't have enabled uh, himself, it wouldn't have enabled him to reach a higher spiritual level. When the going get tough, Moshe Rabbeinu comes to Hashem and he says, why have you caused such a bad situation for the nation? Why have you caused them such harm and such trouble? It's too bad that we lost the giants. I never would have had to explain this to them. I never would have had to go through this with them. They never questioned me. The, the Avo, you know, they had many challenging moments and they believed that I was there, even though I was hidden. Now I have to come to myself and reveal myself to you. They never questioned me and you do. I told Avram, go and walk throughout the land. And he had challenges. He had to bury Sarah. He couldn't find their burial place. But he never questioned me. And now, in the beginning of your mission, you say to me, Mashemi, you're asking for my name, you're asking for more revelation, more proof. Now you're accusing me that since the time of your mission, you, you came to power and I, God, never saved you. I only made the situation worse. We see from this that it's not the status of Moshe that enables the Jewish people to reach a higher level, a higher cognizance of Hashem, a higher relationship with Hashem, and eventually the Geula, the redemption. It's not because of an individual. It's Dafka because of the status of a nation. So even though you have great individuals like Moshe, what happens to the nation, the greater levels they reach, is not because of the individual, it's because of the status as a nation. This is also why we see later in the story 
um, that, uh, or earlier in the story, depending where you're entering it, that Moshe Rabbeinu is so reluctant to agree to be a leader. Because in the time of Moshe, once the nation already exists, he can say, Shlach nabiyat tishlach, gulat Yisrael chayevet litrachesh, bein im al yado, bein im al yadei acher. The only reason Moshe can say, send someone else, is because he knows that the gula is guaranteed and not based on him as an individual or another person as an individual. So if it's not him, it could be somebody else. It doesn't matter who it is. Someone needs to lead them, but it's not because of that someone that they're going to go out. They're going to go out no matter what. right? So this is also connected to that same theory that Moshe Rabbeinu's status is not what's carrying them. It's their status. And because of that, Moshe Rabbeinu can even be lower on the level, the totem pole of Zechuyos than Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov. And Still, Jewish people now will merit a higher geula. And so, too, the reason Moshe Rabbeinu can say, send somebody else, is because he knows that the nation's going out. It's not because of him. It's because of their status as a nation. And now he can say, it's me, it's someone else. It's not because of me that they're going out, and therefore I'm not needed. He wouldn't have been able to say that had the whole geula been based on him and his chuyos, his merits, and his status. Ain he tluya Moshe. The geula is not dependent on him. He's a, a messenger of the people. In theory, it could have been someone else. We can now also understand Hashem's response to Moshe after the Chet Ha'engel. Lech reid ki shi chet amcha. Reid mi gdulatcha. Klum natati lecha gdula el bishval Yisrael. Achshav shi Yisrael chatu. Ata lamali. The Gemara Bracho says when Hashem tells him to go down from the mountain, it's not only go down physically or geographically down to the people, but go down from your greatness, meaning you're no longer great. If the Jewish people are not great, you're not great because your status, Moshe, is not what's carrying them. It's their status that's carrying you. They're the ones who reach a new level. What, what Rav Avinu is trying to point to is that there's always an importance to the individual, even within the framework of the collective. But what transitions in the moment of Ve'ela Shemot is the transition from individuals to collective, where the collective becomes the grand purpose of everything. So you still have Yechidim, you still have individuals. Individuals play critical roles in the sphere of the nation, but the nation is larger than the sum of all its individuals. It's something greater than that. And it's the status of that nation of a whole that carries the people, not the status of great individuals. Great individuals come and grow. Great individuals may rise and may fall. Great individuals may exist in one generation, not another generation. They may pop up, but they're never going to be the prominent salient feature as they once were with Avram Yitzchak It's a new time now where Am B'nai Israel. that's the top status. And individuals who arise, arise only in service of the Klal and in subservience to the Klal. So long as the Klal, the collective entity of the Jewish people is doing well, those individuals be doing well and vice versa. If the nation is lowered, those people are lowered because the two are intrinsically intertwined. It's not that individuals are not important. It's this that they are only important in the context of the broader nation in terms of what they can give and what they can get. We should all be cognizant of the important status of Am B'nai Israel, of our participation in the collective Jewish people and being part and parcel and in terms of our emotions and our physical beings and our time in the project of the collective Jewish people and realize that our role as individuals is critically important, but really ultimately in service of the greater good of the nation as a whole. Shabbat Shalom.